everyone and welcome back to another Real Talk Tuesday where we keep it real with the Lord over here, okay? I am currently outside with my daughter at the park, so I'm not even in my little uh, setup area, but all is well, you know, moms do what moms do, but this is the last episode of season one, whoop, whoop, and when season two will come out, I don't know, child, we just gonna ask the Lord. Nevertheless, I am so excited to end off this season and we are just ending it with how to break generational curses. I know we just spent the whole, pretty much half the season, a little bit more than half, talking about different types of generational curses and how to break them. But this is the just final wrap up and then also a little tidbit on resting in the Lord. All right, so without further ado, let's get into it. Abba Father, we thank you for another day, the last episode of this podcast. Thank you for consistency. Thank you for blessing us with your word, Lord God. We honor you. We glorify you. Holy Spirit, anoint my lips of clay to speak anything that you desire to say. Abba, I just ask that you use me. May I be in tune with your spirit. May I be sensitive to your spirit. And I ask, Abba, that whatever it is you desire to say, the word that goes forth, May it find good ground, produce and develop fruit in the listeners' lives in the name of Jesus. And may it be well with the listeners. May it be well with this podcast. And may it be well with me in Jesus' name. Amen. So the first part of how to break generational curses overall is to first identify the pattern of misfortune. Is it poverty? Is it illness? Is it addiction? Are there traumatic experiences that it happened to your grandma, it happened to your mom, it happened to you, or it happened to your dad, it happened to your grandfather, and it's happening to you? Find the trend that links across generations. One of the trends that was identified for me, a spirit of decomposing and decaying, that everything I put my hand to, it's like I couldn't see it through, and that I would never see the finished product of it. But by the grace and the glory of God, I was delivered from that recently. Now, as I press forward, I'm starting to see the completion even of this podcast. But being able to identify the pattern, the trend, the generational curse, the misfortune across your bloodline, across your family, across generations. Once you find it, you will be able to break it. And also ask the Lord what type of prayers, ask Holy Spirit to guide you to which scriptures and Bible verses the words even to say pertaining to breaking them because death and life is in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat its fruit and we want to eat the good fruit of the Lord right so we have to speak death to the things that are causing death and then go back and speak life we can't just speak death and then go on about our merry way those things that are causing death and decay in our lives we have to go back and replace it with the life and the truth of God the next bit of advice Ask parents if you are able or maybe your grandparents about struggles because they may have some wisdom about how they overcame certain things because sometimes the curse is time sensitive. So you might turn a certain age and find yourself in a mess or in like a little situation and you never know. Maybe one of your parents, your grandparents, they found themselves in that same situation at that same age, but they may have done certain things to overcome. They may have said certain prayers. They have moved to a different area because the curse was in that city, you know, being a stronghold over your life. So even asking, simply asking, not everything has to be super deep and spiritual. And also if you have kids, ask your kids about any struggles that they are having because it will allow you to think back and reflect on your own life to discover the root of a matter and reveal the curse or the trauma. Then you'll be able to intercede for your child and show them how to pray for themselves. Some generational curses can start with you. There may have, it may have been well all the way up until you, or it may have been well all the way up until your mom or your grandma, right? So even in that, be mindful of what you are speaking. Going back to death and life is in the power of the tongue. Be more positive about your family history. Just like how faith is built by hearing God's word and the testimony of God delivering the children of Israel help the newer generation see who God is, having those positive overcoming stories of the family can cause positive outcomes. And reflecting on the good can cause us to focus and speak on a brighter future because again, death and life is in the power of the tongue. And you know that phrase, oh, I ate my own words or I'm eating my own words. We wanna be eating the right words, okay? We wanna see the right fruit being developed because words are also seeds. Talking about thinking more positively, Philippians 4 verse eight. Whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of a good report that have virtue and praise, 
think on these things. And Isaiah 26 verse 3, the Lord will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on the Lord because they trust in the Lord. Those are just two verses upon thinking positively and keeping peace even after you are delivered of any generational curse. All right. The next tip, turn to the saints of God for wisdom and encouragement. Pray always for the Holy Spirit to strengthen us and to reveal the curses to be renounced and denounced because that's the root of it all, right? It's a spiritual. So being able to go to a community of believers who can hear from God truly. Lastly, talk to a therapist, a Holy Spirit filled therapist at that. And they exist and they give great insight because not only is the Lord speaking to them, they have the knowledge to back it up because the word of the Lord says, my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. And I had such a privilege, a blessed privilege and honor to meet a Holy Spirit filled therapist. And she is so fun, so sweet, but she's only licensed in Texas. Her name is Crystal. So if anyone's listening from Texas, um, her name is Crystal Perryman, P-E-R-R-Y-M-A-N. And she is a powerhouse and very knowledgeable and spirit filled. So talk to a therapist. And it might be helpful to have someone that's not in bondage to the generational curse and trauma to be able to talk to them, right? Because sometimes we go to a family member and they blow it off because they either don't know what to say or they don't recognize the trauma in the first place. So having someone outside of the family would be able to help tremendously. So that is it for generational curses and how to break them. Amen. Amen. Now we are moving on to resting in the Lord. I recently learned about, I want to say within this past year, about prayer watch times and the main points or what happens during those watch times. One good example, the midnight to 3 a.m. hour is when assignments go out in the spirit. That's when witches and warlocks are having their demonic meetings and sending out curses and things of that nature. So what does that mean for us with that knowledge is to some of us who are assigned to midnight prayer, some of us who wake up at 3 a.m. out of nowhere, that is your sign from the Lord to be up and praying during those hours because we are called to be watchmen in the spirit. Amen. I make mention of the prayer watch times because I started on my Facebook page to do a 12 noon word and that was the resting in the Lord. That is the seventh watch and it's from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. It is the rest watch hour. And the first message that I'd given on my Facebook Live was coming from Isaiah verse 28 and verse 12. And I'm going to read that to you from the King James Version. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. I'll read it again. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. So related to today and our time, you know, we have busy schedules and whatnot. It feels like we have to keep working. It feels like if we can get ahead, if we can just keep working instead of resting, we'll be able to, you know, be able to reach the goals that we have. But really, we end up exhausted and frustrated and burnt out. When God says rest, he means it because he can see what battle is up next that we have to face. When you look through the Old Testament, and when they were conquering the different lands, they didn't just go forth, conquer, conquer, conquer. They would go back and rest because it takes a lot of effort, a lot of energy to go out and fight. That word rest, the Hebrew word is menuka, which means resting place, quietness and refreshing. It is the same word rest from Psalm 23 verse two. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He makes me lie down in green pastures. That is the same type of rest that we are talking about here. Resting in the Lord equals our souls being restored. Soul restoration. Peace and quietness. That means we're not battling with anybody. We're not contending for peace. Spiritually, it is still, it is comforting, and it is refreshing. And as we rest in the Lord, he gives us his strength. Amen. That word refreshing in the verse where it says, and this is the refreshing from Isaiah 28, 12. I think of the rivers of living water, aka Holy Spirit. And the Hebrew word for that word refreshing in Isaiah 28, 12 is nuach which means repose, be quiet, and have rest. And repose means a state of rest, sleep, or tranquility. Be lying situated or kept in a particular place. 
Hello, green pastures. Again, this is the rest that the Lord has called us to. The rest that he desires for us to take hold of. Amen. Because so many of us think that we just have to keep working and keep plowing. But the Lord wants us to rest and especially to rest in him. So as we close up season one, although we may be contending and fighting, Be sensitive to when the Lord is telling you to rest because mind you, we are in a spiritual battle, but the Lord has the battle, you know, at certain times and certain seasons for us to rise up and to war. Just be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. I encourage you to get into the secret place and ask the Lord, am I in a season of resting? Am I in a season of contending? Ask the Lord what season am I in? And he will surely tell you in the secret place because he makes these things known to us. He does not leave us ignorant. He does not leave us questioning. He wants us to come and ask him. Ask and it shall be answered. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be open to you. And I will leave you all with that for season one. I am so happy, so thankful, so grateful to the Lord for being able to share what he has put in me outward to you all. I pray that you have been blessed during this season. Don't be shy to go back and re-listen and take notes. Share with a friend, okay? Because you never know what type of seeds you are planting when you share things like this, especially if it's a word from the Lord. Amen. So thank you all so much for keeping up with me this whole season. Thank you for allowing me to be in your car, in your room, on your TV, wherever you're listening to me from. I thank you and I appreciate you for listening. I ask that the Lord truly bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and may he give you peace. Amen. That's it for season one, y'all. Can't wait for season two, but I will definitely catch you in the next one.